The next speaker will be Cliff Atkins, Waterbury, I mean Woodbury. Why am I saying Waterbury all the time? <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to thank, first of all, the Rat Pack Motorcycle Club for putting on this event in conjunction with Pat Kelly from the Loyal BPOE of the Elks. Thank you. Um, Peter um, recognized that our troops are still in Afghanistan. Um, one person who died in Afghanistan you might not have heard of was Pat Tillman, a successful NFL football player who gave up millions of dollars to fight for our country. He and his brother joined the Army Rangers in 2002, so I'd like to just a moment of silence for him. Thank you. If I'm a little nervous, it's because of the electricity I had yesterday in Washington, D.C. And I can tell you, there was over two million people there, contrary to what they said in the news. And I would like to also say they had black speakers there and Puerto Rican speakers and Latino speakers, and they said, we are all Americans. Do not let race divide you. This is just a little short one stanza from the poem uh, written in 1964 from, uh, by Bob Dylan, and it's basically um, focused for our senators and congressmen. Come senators and congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall, for he who gets hurt will be he who has stalled. There's a battle outside raging. It will soon shake your windows and rattle your walls. The times they are are changing. In 2002, make sure you vote out all the communists out of office who have taken your life. Today we are at a crossroads of history. The course our politicians have set us on will lead us to economic and social disaster. Bigger is not better. We are demanding the dismantling of the federal, state, and local bureaucracies. Today we remind the politicians in no uncertain terms, when the people, when the people speak, they better listen, because revolution is in the air. This Tea Party revolution is an American revolution. Like the patriots who came before us, we protest big government and its intrusion into the lives of all Americans. The Constitution has been trampled on. Our rights and liberties have been infringed. Those of us who protest are not, as Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano described as terrorists. We remind the Secretary, we who protest are patriots, but we are proud to stand in the company of past terrorists. It is because of their brave efforts we stand here today. Let me mention those past terrorists, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Sam Adams, John Adams, and John Hancock. But we patriots know who the real terrorists of today are. They can be found roaming the halls of Congress and the various state legislatures. If they can call us terrorists, we can call them criminals. Big government has failed in its effort to be all things to all people. We know now that the New Deal under FDR turned out to be a bad deal, that the Great Society under Lyndon Johnson turned into a welfare society. And as we stand here today, we are under no illusion that the socialist agenda under Barack Obama has precipitated the start of a second American Revolution. Yeah!
As the Minutemen of Lexington and Concord fought the British, we patriots of today will not shirk from our responsibilities in defending the Constitution. We will embrace our foe with open arms. As a, a message for those turncoats in, turncoats in Washington, D.C., they better brush up on the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, which asserted that we have a right of revolution. In the next ten years, in the next ten years, the lives of our children will be severely tested. Our country is bankrupt. The federal government has debts approaching $100 trillion. The state of Connecticut alone has a $75 billion pension deficit, yet the government keeps spending our money. This cannot last much longer. If, if they do, we will face the possibility of social unrest. We who protest are giving those left-leaning socialist parasites a warning today. Future generations will not like paying for our debts. Also, this is a call to our youth. Do not let the socialists... I'm here because I want to stick up for my country, which I think we're quickly losing with Obama in office. And the Congress, to be honest with you. Republicans and Democrats. And Joe Wilson should not apologize again. Once was enough. And what town are you from? Over no, how did we get that? Okay, put it this way. We came to town here back in 60. John Kennedy. Right. Okay, he came here about 2 in the morning. I remember. Right. Oh, yeah. There's 100,000 yeah. people yeah. there. Yeah. The from Washington. Yeah. 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 Not quite as wide as this, but all deep going down to the Capitol, from the 14th Street all the way down to 1st. Okay, I'm first to uh, get offenses to get into the Capitol and to the lawn. All right, that was all filled up. The pond separating the Capitol from the um, rest of the street there. language, wealth, and an ever-widening circle of freedom. In those cultures and states that extinguish a belief in God, they eventually saw the suppression of the citizen, the death of art, music, wealth, and the general public well-being. Communism and Nazism tried to control and destroy a belief in God because a belief in God establishes a certain meaning and value in the human person which such faith cannot permit. We see how China and Korea professing an atheistic belief suppress their own people.